Yo, what's good, First Smoke family? Shout out to my man, Cos, Cosmo Music. Appreciate you coming through and blessing the set. And if you haven't already, go to growgeneration.com, use the code FIRSTSMOKE10 in store or online. Tell them the family sent you. They're gonna take care of you. And if you want to check out a hot new nutrient company, switch the drip. Everybody's switching a drip. Shoot us an email, family at firstsmokeoftheday.com or go to the website, fill out a little tab on there under the sponsor page and they'll get you hooked up with a sample run of drip. What else? Go to the site. We have all the codes for our discounts with affiliates. Also, guess what? You get early access behind the scenes, off the mic, the rolling tutorials. We put out so much stuff on fsotd.com that we don't put anywhere else. Tier three gang, shout out to you guys. Your name's on the end of the episode. If you're tier three gang on the website, your name's actually in the credits. Appreciate you. On there though, the Dr. Dabber code, the new one, First Smoke Summer. It gets you hooked up on the XS, the Evo, the collabs. Come on now. We're rocking this, we're rocking the new Evo. We got the, the Sugar Sean, drdabber.com, First Smoke Summer. Cos Pacino, wait till you see this one. Me and the fam had it lit 400 summers, real ones. You ain't taking nothing from us on the block, watching out for the undercovers. God watching above us, we running now. Now off to the race. Yeah. Yes, sir. You already know where we at, man. Cookies in YC. This shit couldn't be any bigger, man. Manifest destiny, man. Speak these things into existence because we here. This shit feel like a dream come true, man. What's good, everybody? We're back. It's first smoke of the day. Today's episode 106. It's your boy Pat God's here in the building. Here with Blackleaf as always. Smoking. And we got a legend in the building today, man. My man Cosmo. Appreciate Straight out of the that, bay, man. bro. How you doing? I'm great, man. Appreciate you guys having me, bro. Thanks for coming down, man, and yes, making sir. it happen. It's been a little bit in the making here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys got me out of my hole, man. It's rare. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hell yeah. I appreciate it, though. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. For real. For sure. Hey, you've, man... You've been a blessing to the game and got a lot going on. And every, like I was telling you before we got on, this is like a lot of the good people that I know in this world have all been, you know, telling me, hey, get Cosmo on, get Cosmo mm -hmm. on. That's dope, man. And I've always like seen it tied to the music, but I, I never really personally knew how involved you are or, you know, were involved with uh, the cannabis world too and yeah. how those worlds intertwine. So, yeah, you know, it kind of goes parallel these days the music yeah. and the weed and shit you know what i mean and me being around the people i was around i felt like it was a natural step for me at some point to you know play my play my hand in the legal cannabis game you know? absolutely yeah lacaz yeah lacaz yeah, dubs garden co-owner and both with my partner frank you know what i mean we hear a lot about, man, Dubs is crushing, bro. A bunch of crushing. brands talking about them, you know? Yeah. like. And then I've always seen you repping Lacaz heavy, which yeah. is dope to see it on in cookies, everywhere. Absolutely, you know? yeah. man. Absolutely. For sure. How do you meet Burner? What's that first link up like? Let me just get that first out. First link up was in uh, Richmond, Cali, man. I, I went over to a friend's house, and he was there, you know, working on some music already, and he had heard some of my beats and, you know, just wanted to get some music in with me. We, take a ride to sack our first trip was just all humor and we just hit it off like crazy you know what i'm saying and we've been locked in ever since i've been pretty much involved in every project he's done since then you know what i mean so yeah that's dope as hell yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. so take it all the way back um you know what was uh what was childhood like and then like when did you start getting involved with music because i'm guessing that was probably one of your first things that you took passionately and wanted to you know get into more as far as the music goes you know what i mean it was like i was living in san francisco in the 80s where like break dancing and hip-hop and all that shit was just kind of starting to get big you know and um a lot of it obviously was on the east coast but it was trickling into frisco like crazy and my brother i just remember him like going to clement street coming home with some records and one of the records was this UTFO record, and they had all these samurai swords on the back. And I was like, you know, back then, like, kids were, like, big on being ninjas. Like, I was young. I wanted to be a fucking ninja. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. So I saw that, uh, 
I saw that cover, man, and I fell in love with that shit, bro. You know what I mean? And my dad, you know, he he's from Cleveland originally. He's like a super soulful dude, you know what I'm saying? And he was living in Cleveland, going to see Curtis Mayfield and these guys out in the ghettos way back then, you know what I'm saying? And um, he met my mom in Frisco and, you know, playing music in a bar, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, Pops, he was just like, Heavy in the in the in the Bay Area music scene, you know, as far as like uh, playing weddings and nightclubs and you know w- w- whatever you're doing at that time. But um, so you know, growing up, I would hear like blues, rock and roll. My mom would play country. My brother was straight rap. You know what I mean? So back then, at that time, in order to even catch rap music, you had to catch it on the radio. You know what I mean? It was a radio station called k And And, um, like, you used to have to have the little mini radio uh, recorder, little tape thing, and you had to be catch that shit when it came on. You know what I mean? And me and my brother, that you know, that's how you get the music. Then we listen to the tapes back for the, you know, whatever. We also used to, you know, cap, like, you know, clown. But back then it was called capping, making fun of each other. That was part of the culture then, too. And we used to have those same little things. And me and my brother, we'd go back and forth, and he'd make fun of me till I cry. And that's how I got good at capping on people. You know what I'm saying? So when I moved from Frisco to the suburbs out in Marin, I was fucking way advanced. Nobody can yeah. fuck with me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everyone at like, middle Yo. school is crying. For real. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> The, a lot of music history coming out of the Bay and out of like Central Cali, Northern Cali, all through there. I mean, great bands. Talk about places. I think it was Metallica, but I mean, it's on and on. You got Grateful on. Dead. You got Dude. Tower of Power. You got fucking Larry Graham. Uh, 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 there was another big one. Um, more of a rock group some shit i mean yeah i mean on and on forever forget it um but you so you grow up you're listening to blues country rap you have all these inspirations what do you kick off doing what's your start in music rap yeah rap since i was fucking like five you know i was break dancing we moved into a uh when we moved into our house in noe valley back in the days you know we ripped out the floor so we had all the uh linoleum you know what I mean? And that's what kids used to break dance and shit on. So I was into the break dancing. I had the fucking black jeans with all the fucking zippers on them and shit looking wild, you know? And um, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying like I was a rapper at fucking five years old, but that's what I gravitated toward. You know what I mean? And, you know, I remember when I was getting ready to leave uh, uh, San Francisco, my dad, at two. this is when Two Live Crew came out. You guys you know, two live crew. Yeah. So that was a pivotal point in music because that shit was like having a porno. You know what I'm saying? You know, somebody said, hey, we want some pussy. <laughs> like who the fuck was doing that then? You know what I mean? So I, my dad, dude, I was in third grade when that album came out. You could check the dates and my age and see all this shit lines up. I remember my dad taking me to Streetlight Music and buying me that tape in third fucking grade, dude. <laughs> Can because, you imagine he's coming from jazz and piano and he's like, you got to hear this, son. Yeah. Well, hey, no, I wanted want it. Pills. I wanted it, yeah. but he had to be old enough, you know, yeah. to, to buy it for me. And I was like, oh, you know, and I think what it is, because I'm the same way with my kids now, like. I don't give a fuck if they reciting like a swear word. I'm more impressed that they're catching the rhythm and that they got their, you know, that they got rhythm and, you know, melody and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm more impressed that they're into the music than that there's a couple cuss words. So I think with Pops, that was probably, he was like, damn, my son's mm-hmm. in the music. Fuck it. If it's cuss words or not, we're going to run it, you know? So he I, knows it'll graduate to something that's different. That's so huge too because. Yeah. A lot of kids go through childhood. Their parents never believed in mm-hmm. one thing they wanted mm-hmm. to do. And they just try to get them to do everything they wanted them to do. Yeah. Well, I like I, I feel like it gives a kid a big, huge advantage in life and believing in themselves when they have a parent that's like that. Like, oh, you want to wear your hair like that? Oh, you want to dress like that? Oh, like, yeah. All right, cool. Go ahead then. Mm-hmm. You know? Do yeah. It. Unfortunately, man, I was a pretty bad kid. You know what I'm saying? Like my parents couldn't really tell me much. You know what I'm saying? After a certain age, like, I was very bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, very bad. You know, like, very bad. 
And as I got older, <laughs> what, type, what type of things? Type of I things. know it was bad because you said it five times. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, people see you me now and, you know, they're like, oh, Kaz is a good dude. That's because I'm paying my debt to society. Like, I got to be cool. You know, I got a lot to make up for. You know what I mean? And, uh, man, you know, it was just, it was cool to be dumb back then. And, you know, cool to be a fuck up. You know what I'm saying? So I fucked up a lot, you know? And I had hippie parents. It wasn't their fault that, you know, I always, you know, the love is going to always out, you know, outweigh everything. So we were raised with mad love, but not mad discipline necessarily. You know what I'm just a little more loose on the discipline side. You know what I'm saying? But um, I mean, I got two of the best parents in the world, dude. Like mm -hmm. my dad is like the fucking white Gandhi. He's like the most peacefulest, patient dopest dude ever you know what i mean it took me you know as to become an adult to realize this you know and my mom too you know so probably for you to have a kid too oh, and then man. get some perspective huh <laughs> yeah bro <laughs> yeah. you know and and you gotta remind yourself like damn i was i was a bro i, I, I stole was a handful. so much weed from my mom growing up bro <laughs> You know, that now I bless her. And I'm like, you know, like I said, I'm paying it forward because like kids knew my mom had the most fire weed ever. Like she was getting it from the Grateful Dead motherfuckers like my godfathers do Charlie Fox. She used to come through with the yellow manila envelope and it'd be like a ball, like look like a popcorn ball. It's like skunk weed back then. Just like lime green, the stinkiest shit ever. Like, you know, skunk was like. The original OG. Yeah. OG was like the first thing that had that coffee funk, you know, that smell. But skunk weed was the before that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I don't know if it was the same, you know, genetics or not, but that some of that skunk one and some of those northern lights or whatever that shit was back then, shit was funky, dude. But like my friends would always know, gosh, you got some of your mom's shit. You got some of your mom's shit. And I'm like, yeah, you know. Awesome. I'll tell you guys a story, you know, I tell people one time, uh, this is before I even started smoking, but my homeboy, Tim Dog, he was ahead of the game already. He was like sixth grade, had triple beams because his sisters and shit were, you know, ahead of, you know, had older sisters with crazy boyfriends and shit. So it's his birthday. And I'm like, usually I pinch my mom's weed, you know, this time I took the whole fucking bag. And I'm like, yo, I'm going to give this to Tim Dog for his birthday, you know? So, boom, go to his birthday. I give it to Tim. We're in fucking round table playing video games, drinking root beer and fucking eating pizza and shit. I, that someone gets a call and they're like, Cosmo, your mom's on the phone. It's a, <laughs> she says it's a family emergency. <laughs> right? She says it's a family emergency. Holy and I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? I already knew what it was about. Yeah. So, I get home and she's like trying to tell me without telling me, you know, she's like, did you see a, a bag of something right here? I'm like, no, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, maybe it was my sister, you know, it was Feather. She did it. So they go upstairs and they find some little crumbs in her drawer. And then, you know, she got the blame for it for, for years. Holy shit. Damn. Yeah. You're like, no, nah, well, damn my near... boy Tim Dog over that. No, I had to leave the party, bro. <laughs> yeah. I had to leave the, thir I was 13. I had to come, well, I was probably 12 because mm -hmm. I started smoking in my like 12 or 13. Tim Dog was the one who's trying to get me to smoke. But you know, they say the first time you smoke, you don't really get high or whatever. But um, that was like a hundred dollar sack back then, probably. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> you know what it is? It's like, this is the reality too, is weed wasn't always cool. In like urban communities, in like the hip hop world, and I always see. Be real, I credit him for this. Cypress Hill made weed cool in hip hop single handedly. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. That's the truth, bro. Because I was there to witness it. I remember the, the High Times episode that came out. Just be real, how to roll a blunt, and they walked you through it step by step. How to roll a blunt. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Yeah, so it's legendary as fuck. I mean, the blunts came from New York. You know, blunts were like a New York thing, but be real in Cypress Hill. I mean, bro. There's places people only dream of going. I've been there. And you could
could too. I I mean, like, weed at that time, like, was more like in the white world, like rockers and fucking shit were smoking. But the rappers, not so much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I mean, it's, it's, that's how I mm-hmm. saw it through, through my eyes. But like, as time went by, when Cypress Hill started coming out with the bucket hats and, you know, and, and everybody wanted to look and, oh, my bad. Everybody wanted to look and, uh, and, and, and kind of be like Cypress mm-hmm. Hill. So they, they popular, popularized weed and hip hop, if you ask me. Oh, they took that shit around the world. They took it around the world. It's crazy. So, it's, it's crazy to think about at that time period, early 90s. It's like, fuck, we're, we're in 2023 and we're just now able to like smoke a joint outside and not in some places, a mm-hmm. few places, yeah. not many places. Like, and these places being like huge cities, my, or, you know, New York, so LA, dope, LA yeah. SF. Really, anywhere else, like you're definitely gonna still catch eyes and people being mm-hmm. like, "What? What do you? Oh my god!" Man, I was just talking to this dude on the plane and said he brought some weed to Malaysia, bro. They still killing. Did someone just got the death penalty? That's instant death. You get caught with weed in Malaysia. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I'm not. That's, I'm not on that. That's, that's intense. That. You know what I'm saying? That's just, I like to smoke. I mean, I do bring weed to most places I go. You know, but. <laughs> I just won't uh, go to those places. Wouldn't. That's no go zone. I'm not going yeah. to Malaysia no time yeah. soon. You know just, I mean? Have you been to um, Dubai? No. See, and that's the no. thing with a lot of weed smokers have not been to Dubai. I, I want to go because I want to get on. want to go, but no one's worked it up to like. I want to get on those fucking jetpacks, you, you, things out there. That shit looks crazy. They got they got the boats. There, it's like a. Uh, it looks like a Corvette, and they're driving it across the water, but it's like a jet boat. And you get they're, oh, they're different supercars. But no, have you seen so the dudes like, oh, the that got the packs on that are really flying, bro? With no. the packs <laughs> on flying like fucking in Superman. The air, out not, there. not like over the water, right? No. Yeah. In the oh, air. Packs. A real let jet people pack. take what No, the water ones shit. look sick too. The little Yeah, sh- yeah. But you're talking like our a legitimate jet pack jet pack. Man. Yeah, they're doing that out there. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that. That's, That's just insane. Wild. That's I crazy. know somebody. Who fucking forgot they had a roach and ended up in Dubai with a with a roach? You know they didn't get caught, but he's like, "Fuck!" I, I forgot know a lot of people it. that they'll take like the pins, yeah, Great pins. Even yeah. that's that's what dude did to Malaysia. He brought Ooh, the pins. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's it's less detectable because like you could be hitting it and people don't really know. But if you're smoking a joint or a blunt, if they roll up on you, you with the wake pen, up, I mean, blocks, yeah. blocks of people like you right, swallow never smell that. that. You're gonna. Sh- I was probably swallow it. What the pen? What do you do with it? <laughs> I literally happens. untake the the cat thing off the top. I mean, what do you? Do? I mean, what do you mean? Like if you're out there and you got your vape pen, right? And they roll, oh, and up, they roll on you? up on you. What are you gonna do? Yeah, you gotta have a fake. That's why one with this, it's like it's oh, like an actual nicotine. vape pen. You gotta, you gotta have like a, like a real vape pen. You know, that's not like mix it in with weed. the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good call. But okay. you know what, man? Just don't go to fucking places where you can't bring weed. Yeah. Or they're going to kill if you if you get trying to smoke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a yeah, sketchy it's, part of the world. Yeah. What's been like one of your favorite places that you've got to go, you know, go visit? Man, bro. While doing the music stuff. I haven't been that that many places, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, I haven't. <laughs> I sent my son to fucking France before I went. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Even in the states. Uh, uh, okay, in the states. I mean, on tour with Burner. You know what I'm saying? I I don't. Uh, Which place surprised you? Where you're like, man, I fuck with this spot. Like these people are Austin. Yeah, that makes I, sense. I like Austin, Texas. Got like a Chico vibe. You know what I mean? It's yeah. probably like that one place that's in Texas that got a little Cali to it. You know? You know yeah, what I'm saying? A little alternative. Yeah, Progressive. got good barbecue, got a cool little downtown scene. You know what I mean? <laughs> Comedy's going crazy over there right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Austin was cool. Um, man, I mean, I'm such a fan of New York, man. It's just such a dope city, bro. You know, I got a lot of history. Well, my mom's from New York. My brother lived out there for a long time. So every time I go there, I feel at home, man. You know, that's dope. And the fact that we could walk around smoking in the streets, bro, when we used to have to fucking 
You go to Rikers Island, you get caught with <laughs> way eight. Way different. <laughs> way now different. you're smoking in front of the police. It's beautiful, man. Yeah, it it's is. beautiful. No, it really is. Yeah. It shows, it shows how over it people are that like, oh, it's weed. People are just over that. They're like, who gives a fuck? Keep yeah, walking. Yeah, man. I mean. It's the same. I mean, what's, what's better with the You know what's funny, like, though, you know, bro? It's crazy. Is that I'm still so used to weed being a criminal thing that, bro, like, I'm scarred for life. Like, I have the guiltiest conscience, bro. Like, you know, no matter what, I, I feel like like I'm so scared of police at, at my older age. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want any run-ins. I don't want to see a cop, you know, and I always ride and smoke. So I'm like, why do I do this to myself? I'm putting myself paranoid. through the shit because I'm high. I got packs. I got mm-hmm. money. I'm fucking, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You start to go to like, all oh, right, I just don't want to have a problem. Well, you're, you're in the best place for that, though, Cali. Yeah. Yeah, it's came a place. long way, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I'm still not that guy. Like, bro, I, I, I still, you know what my mom told me back in the days? She said, if you want to live outside the law, you got to live within the law. You know what I'm saying? You got to follow the rules. Don't break the law while you're breaking the law. Yeah. So or if you're going to break the law, follow the basic guidelines, you know, the mm-hmm. basic shit. You know what I'm saying? The OGs used to tell She's, me uh, mm-hmm. one crime at a time. She used to, oh, well, my OGs used to tell, you know what they used to tell my OGs used to tell me right before they ripped you off? They'd be like, give me your money, I'm a, I'm a, I'll be right back. And mm-hmm. they never come back. And then you see them three days later, be like, bro, where the fuck's my weed? They'd be like, hey, man, felonies aren't free. <laughs> like, oh, you fucking scumbag. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Felonies aren't free. Oh, everyone's heard a story like that from an OG, oh some type of gosh. wisdom passed down that you're like, wait, what now? And make you feel better about getting ripped off. <laughs> you know? yeah, like, your mind fucked at that point. Yeah, man. I mean, we came up around some, some, some frivolous characters, dude. So that's another thing. Like after leaving Frisco and going to Marin, I'm over in Fairfax, which is a small little hippie town where every business is getting shut down for fucking... This guy at the pizza shop selling Coke. This guy at the coffee shop selling Coke. It's like this drug infested town where everybody's doing acid in sixth and seventh grade. There's fucking hash everywhere. It really, it really enhanced my knowledge on drugs in general over there. Like, we're not seeing that shit in the city like that, you know? I mean, I got caught with acid in seventh grade, bro, in 1993. You know? Damn. Yeah. Yeah. What was that first acid trip like? Horrible. So bad that I feel like I'm still traumatized from that <laughs> shit to this day. I'm not even joking. Might have never fully. That might have been why I was sweating so what bad. What was early. it? Paper? Small piece of Yo. paper, a little stamp. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so Shit's back crazy. in the days in Frisco, you had Hate Street, right? Yeah. I think it was because you were that young. Man, I just wasn't for me, man. You were ready for that shit. Hallucinogenics, huh? man. I feel like. Where, where'd you Where'd you take it at? So check it out. So so back in the days in Frisco, you go down Hate Street. Every fucking, every doorway, you got a guy going, Bud, shrooms, doses. Bud, oh. shrooms, doses. Bud, shrooms, doses. So we're, in, we're, we're might be like freshmen at this time in high school, you know? And that's where you go to score. You go to Hate Street. People go get their bongs. This when you're really just getting into weed. You want the posters. You want all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So... Bud, shrooms, doses, bud, shrooms, doses. So my buddy scored some fucking acid. It was called Monkey in a Barrel. There's a little fucking red little square piece of paper with a monkey with a drum, you know? And we were over at these apartments we used to hang out at. And uh, they're all telling me, oh, how dope it was. We fried. We uh, I'm like, all right, cool. Give me a half. So I took the half. Like a half hour goes by and I still don't feel it. So I'm like, all right, give me that other half. As soon as I took that fucking that first and second half, I felt the first. And it was already a lot. Yeah, this is Sir Francis Drake Boulevard. So it's a busy ass street. It's about maybe seven, seven, seven thirty at night. Everyone's getting home from work. So I lived at the end, you know, maybe about 10, 15 minutes up that main road. And bro, I'm frying walking home. Cars are going like this. Everyone's coming out to get their fucking mail. Their newspaper, it feels like everyone's just fucking watching me, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was the creepiest shit ever. I get home and I used to have these like super ankle biter dogs, you know, like my mom had them, not me. I hated the fucking dogs, but she had these dogs that would bark 
And this time they didn't bark. Because, you know, they say dogs can tell if you're on acid, the pupils, you know what I mean? So my mom, she sees me and she goes, oh, my God, Kazi, are you on acid? She knew right away. She turned the light on, lift my eyes up. Oh. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, man. I'm frying like fuck. So I go in my room. I got my homeboy with me. I turn out the light. I'm playing this F-Zero video game. I'll never forget it. It was like Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo or some shit. And the car just kept going, bro. It was supposed to be going around the track like this. That motherfucker just kept going, dog. And the next thing you know, the walls are literally, people say the walls breathe. This shit's moving. I'm fucking shriveled up in my bed just like waiting for the high to go. There's nothing worse than getting too high and just wanting that shit to end. You know what I'm saying? So... I fried, dude. I sent my boy home. I'm fucking, I, I took shrooms, like, and the same shit happened. So I was like, you know what? I did acid one more time after that. Some, like, really weak shit. Didn't fry too hard, but hallucinogenics ain't for me, man. You know what I'm saying? No way. It's, I, they're not for everybody, that's nah, for sure. Like, I can't fuck with it. Never. Yeah. Never. I don't want shrooms. I don't want a micro dose. I don't want a fucking... I don't want DMT. I don't want to find my inner fucking. You know, you know, it'd be anything awesome for you uh, uh -huh. to go to an ayahuasca ceremony. Nah, man. Yeah, I'm not trying man. to find. It's not it. hallucinogenic. Bro. <laughs> I'm not trying to find it. I'm not trying to find the inner fucking whoever the fuck. You know, I'm. I'm took we'll me take years. You out, you know you long, it took me to just be cool with myself. To get in now touch I'm with, gonna find somebody else. To get in touch retreat. with Cos Pacino. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it took me a long time Bro. to just be comfortable with me. Yeah, you know, I'm just being real. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that's even like with the music shit, and just you know, a lot of people will tell you, I'm, you know, just over the last few years, have I really started to like surface and push myself? You know, do the obvious shit that you got to do when you're building a brand. You know what I'm saying? You feel more comfortable playing the background. It might be that acid telling me to fucking play the background, but I do. I do, man. I do. You know what I'm saying? I like I like being in the cut, but but now, you know, we got to add value to the brand. There's certain things we got to do. We got to come sit with the good folks like yourself and spread the gospel, man. And you know what I mean? And there's a lot of weirdos in the industry, man. And, you, you know... Uh, if if we can just be, you know, a, a small fraction of the dudes that, you know, spread love and keep it solid and do honest business and treat people nicely and shit, you know, that's that's kind of my my MO, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm big on the universe and the energy and the karma and reciprocation and you know. I 100% agree. I look at it like this, man. If, if, if you're somebody out here that's working hard and you're expecting a lot from the world, you're like, yo, I want to be a fucking millionaire. You know what I'm saying? Or I want to be a football player, but you're out here living foul. It's like you got to be putting that energy into the universe in order to get it back. You know what I'm saying? And it's the shit that people see when no one's looking. You know what I mean? That's what they say. What really defines a human is like, oh, I could have just pocketed that but no one's looking i could have kept that but you know being solid when no one's looking that's that's what's that's what it's about rare you know what I'm saying yeah it's becoming rare like if you want to live a good life and stand out that's all you got to do that's all you got to do communicate and keep and, and be truthful honest you know yeah and, man and uh it's crazy because you said said a lot of things on those last statements and uh, i couldn't agree more um we were talking about how like your parents and stuff when they came up like it was different time like it was all about love and that was that era and now it definitely feels more like war and every man for himself war too yeah man the there's industry. not even like like teams or conglomerates you guys, you it's guys, like i look at it and i see it i'm like it's it's a, it's a lot of a lot of every man for himself what i see even yeah. if it is a brand or a team i still view it as every man for himself because that's the that's the mentality. Yeah. That's come of this. And look, the realities are there's no money in it anymore. Not like there was. So that's Facts. even brought it to a crazier level.
We're right here, our favorite place to go, you know, where the pros go to grow, at Grow Generation. Over 60 stores nationwide, either in-store or online. Use our code. First Smoke 10. Family, get online if you're shopping for grow goods, First Smoke 10, or in-store anywhere in the U.S. Tell them the First Smoke family sent you. We'll see you there, you know, where people are fucking enraged. And they want someone to blame. They Poor want to farmers, play the victim. Man. I feel bad for the farmers, man. Yeah, you know what I'm I mean, saying? Because uh, I don't go to farms and beat people down on prices and try to haggle. I'm not that dude, man. You know, at the end of the day, why would I want to be in a business that's fucking devalued? You know what I mean? Why would I want to base my future on an industry that's fucking sinking or, you know, where the price of the product is fucking drastically deteriorizing or, you know, however you want to yeah. look at it. But so I'm, I'm, man, I'm, I'm happy to see farmers get their just due because I farmed myself. I mean, I'm not no hell of a farmer, but I didn't did just about, you know, everything, you know, from yeah. having greenhouses and garages with 20 lights in them and growing shit with powder mold and mites and, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and having bad runs and, and people run off on tabs, you know what I'm saying? I've been through it all, dude. But, Tell us more about um, maybe like how high school was okay, and then how you, you know, jumped into that game because I don't think a lot of people know that. Facts. So really, man, I started selling weed about 12 13 years old you know i had a well you know we was in my household man i had the kind of home where i could be like yo mom so and so is about to come by can you leave this out for him you know like i grew up like yeah. that people knocking on my windows and it was a mess you know what i'm saying every three months my dad had come in right you gotta cut this shit out you know flash yeah. out of nowhere i'm like all right, all right you know i remember fucking being in like eighth grade getting the qp like on a friday night sitting on my bed and bagging it all up point sevens you know point sevens dude that's a lot of fucking point sevens a quarter pound you know what i'm Damn. saying good shit uh at some point it started getting good you know yeah, what i mean yeah. but my buddy say cool man rest in peace he was uh one of the first people to put like brown weed in my hand you know that also, rage. one of the first people had me drinking Cisco and shit. I don't know if you guys remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking horrible shit. <laughs> but um, yeah, like this brown weed. You know, it's Mexican weed, but we call it Colombian gold. You know what I'm saying? It sounded yeah. better. And I think that was the first like bulk, like something like a couple zips that I got my hands on. And then from there, uh, high school came and uh, I had another homie that was fronting me weed and I mean, where, where I grew up over there, it was just a fucking culture. I mean, all the kids, everybody, I mean, it just what was what it was. Everyone was like the sons of, a, of hippies over there and shit. You know what I'm saying? So um, it was inevitable, man. Mm -hmm. You know, if fucking some kids were doing way worse shit, you know. Um, but um, yeah, so high school. You know, back in those days, you had like Blueberry, you had, um, like I was saying, Northern Lights, Skunk, um, Durban Poison, I think, maybe mm -hmm. like back then. Uh, some of the shit my mom would give so far, I didn't even know what the fuck it was, but I know she was getting it from like the Grateful Dead kind of route. Um, so then, you know, I ended up in continuation school. Um, like I said, you know, I felt like it was cool to fuck up. So I just, you know, I probably could have been smarter. You know what I'm saying? My brother's super smart. My dad's super, my sister, everybody's super smart, but I'm life smart. Book smart? No. School smart? No. I probably got that fucking third grade education. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my kids are way fucking smarter than me. But, you know, I mean, uh, knowing how to maneuver through the, the world is, is good too. And, uh, you know, build good, solid relationships and shit. But, um, yeah, so then, you know, guy, you know, I got in some trouble like my senior year, fucked up. And then after that, uh, my kid, I think my kid was born in like my early 20s. I was living in Petaluma and uh, I was overpaying for some shitty apartment. You know, I had went to a birthday party up in SAC. 
And my boy was like, fuck, he had a hot tub, he had a pool, he owned the house, he had all this shit, he was paying a little more than what I was paying. So I was like, at that point, I'm thinking, you know, I just want to have a dope spot for my kids to wake up. Well, I had just one kid at that time. But, you know, to me, it's like, it's about, you know, I don't care where I am as long as I have a house, you know, out there, I get a house with a pool, hot tub, this, that, and the third. So I end up moving. This time, I'm sur- at that time, I'm just surviving off beats because I'll, I'll bring you back a little. So my, my, my late high school years, I'm living at home and I'm selling weed and, and, when I graduated high school, I started working at the pizza shop. So I'm, now I'm working like crazy hours too, like overtime. I'm selling weed and I'm living at home. So like I'm saving my money like a motherfucker, you know? My mom called me the squirrel, you know? She's like, you're the, you're the squirrel. You tuck all your shit away, you know? Spend him with your money, you know? So when my first son was born, I had like 50, 60 bands at like, you know, uh, my early 20s, okay, you know? Just that saved shit on up. the mattress. Yeah, like yeah. Came up on everybody. No, a dirty sock, dude. The sock, I had the money in the Crown sock for bag. so long, there was ink stains from the money on the sock, you know? <laughs> so a big ass sock. Yeah. Yeah. 50, so, 60 million. <laughs> Holy so, shit. <laughs> That's a sack. That ain't but, a sock. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but then when my son was born, you know, so fucking all that, I, I just was surviving off that money I saved and I saw how quick it could go, you know? And then um, when I'm living in Petaluma, at that point, I'm not really selling weed. I kind of fell off. Like I smoked somebody in front of me at QP and I had their money. They didn't come get it right away. I ended up sp- spending the money, owing my boy for a fucking couple years, you know? So I just kind of fell off. You, you get to that point where like, you know, you just, your hustle might fall apart. You know what I'm saying? And I start just focusing on beats and music and shit, you know? And I start uh, sh- taking that more serious and um, even like rewind a little bit. So like, you know, I'm maybe in my 18, 19, I'm just a kid, you know, in love with the culture and the music shit. And I'm in my, my little studio in Fairfax and, you know, my mom, she had the garage. I'm in the back. And then uh, one day there was this group 5150 from Marin City who, you know, they came up with, with, with Pac, like Tupac and shit. And there was this, this dude, Tack, who, you know, we all loved his music at that time. And he had got wind of my shit. Somebody brought him over to my crib and he kind of embraced me and he started bringing me around to studios. And he got me out on Third Street and Hunter's Point and fucking, you know, he's bringing me up to SAC, to all these different places, bringing me around like some cool artists, just really, really embracing me, man. And it, like... I owe him so much for that. You know, I don't talk to him that much anymore, but like, you know, he was already solidified and I'm just some kid, you know, trying to figure it out. And he like really took me under his wing and brought me around. I end up meeting like uh, Killer Tay and, you know, JT, the bigger figure, San Quinn, a lot of the local Bay Area dudes. And they just super embraced me. And that's where some of my first music, you know, was coming out from like, Quinn and JT, Killate, Messi Marv, those dudes, you know? And uh, so, you know, I'm up in Petaluma. My son's about two or three. I'm fucking surviving off selling beats, which ain't easy. Dudes want to give you a no. thousand bucks for 15 beats and shit, you know? You're like, oh. But you're just trying to get your name out there. You're just figuring it out, you know? So eventually I end up moving the sack. You know, I get the house up there, I get out of Petaluma. And, um, I had some homies working at the mortgage companies. They did the fixed loans, adjustable though. So when the market crashed, my shit shot the fuck up, you know? My my mortgage went through the roof. So now I'm in foreclosure. And this whole time I'm surviving off beats. I'm selling beats. I'm at the mercy of, of these dudes, you know? Like I got to sell these beats for whatever I can get by tomorrow because I got rent due, you know? And I had these kids I grew up with. They're over at my house. I'm working on a mixtape for them. And they're like, yo, you know you could put a fucking grow room in that garage in there, right? (laughs) And I'm like, yeah. They're like, yeah. They're like, how about instead of us paying you for this fucking project, we we set you up and we'll walk you through the first couple runs. And I'm like, shit. Let me go holler at wifey, man. I'm about to tell my girl. We're about to blow up the fucking garage, you know? (laughs) So they come in with fucking like 600 watt digital loud ass balances with chains and shit and hanging that shit and 
first run was all right. Second run, I think I put Avid in the reservoir or something <laughs> crazy and just ruined everything. And um, but from there, it led to other things, you know, like because then the four lighter turned to six, and then you start doing things other places. And I wasn't no hell of a grower, but I, you know, I was like sometimes good run, sometimes bad run, but I was resourceful so I could still get rid of it, you know what I'm saying, and, and be able to survive off off that. And really between music and weed, that's how I've survived my whole life, you know? Um, the like last real job I had was probably uh, Petaluma. So that's another story. I got a delivery job. I had to buy this truck. I'm driving. I'm, you know, George Lucas Films and shit, ILM and all that. I'm, I'm picking up reels to like the Pirates of the Caribbean and shit. And one day, I always used to smoke, but, but one day it was raining and I hit a little roach before I went to go do a, a pickup or whatever. And um, I go, I drop the shit off and I forgot to give him the fucking invoice. So as I'm pulling out, he come knock, knock on the window and I'm like, oh, fuck, it smell like weed in here, you know? So I like barely crack the window. <laughs> I slide the invoice out. Oh, I barely crack the window. I slide the invoice out and fucking before I even get out the, the, the parking lot, my boss calls me, like, man, what the fuck are you doing? You're smoking weed. I got to let you go. You know, fires me for that because ILM is such a big account. That's George Lucas. Like, you can't be fucking around with that, you know? Um, but yeah, that was the last job I had, man. You know what I'm saying? I was probably like 25, it was probably 20 years ago as far as like a nine to five gig, you know? How do you start to learn the boards though and making beats go from like hanging around one of your homies to be like, all right, let me see if I can put something together. Does he kind of shadow you, mentor you? Like, how does that go from a relationship where he's kind of taking you around to you starting to make beats? Who, who taking me around? You said your homie. Some of your boys were like taking you oh, around. Oh, they, they were more so taking me. I was making beats. So I started making beats like I was like 15, 16. So I was like um, my dad and another friend, a friend of mine, Jason Rosenberg, man, he was over at my crib one day and he... He was just showing me how it works. And my dad used to make my beats. So when I first tried to rap, I thought my voice was cool, but I couldn't rap on beat, you know? So I get these old, like, you know, local Bay Area uh, albums. And at the end of the songs, it'd be like a little bit of uh, an instrumental where there was no rapping, you know what I'm saying? And I would record myself rapping over that little free space just to hear how my voice would sound you know like do i got a cool voice do i even sound cool at all so i would just mumble some shit and i'm like play it back i'm like oh fuck i sound kind of cool you know but i couldn't rap on beat so then i start freestyling and shit and then i was able to kind of find the beat a little more you know um but during that time like yeah my dad was making my beats and that was when we had like four tracks you know so you would have to like or, or like overdub. So like he would, we had like a, a drum machine that had like a pre-programmed drum beat that you just boom, you know, some cheesy drum beat. And then my dad would play some like keys over it. And then we, you know, bounce that to a tape and then I would rap over that. And then that's how he started making my beats. So then he got me like a, a, a four track, which was literally only four tracks and there's no quantize what quantize is that's what like you could play something off and quantize it and that makes it it will fix it back then you didn't have that you know what i'm saying so i had to play the shit the whole four or five minutes through nothing would loop it would sound fucking horrible you know what i mean but i was just going through the motions figuring the shit out and um yeah just man i i i just uh i, I never it never left me, you know what I'm saying? And Pop started buying. Once he saw that I had the slightest knack, he started buying keyboards and forcing. Next thing you know, we got the studio. People are coming over. And and um, how old were you at that point? I was like 15, 16. Damn, that's dope. So that, that happened quick. Yeah. And then now you're known as like you got, you know, your mom's got the best weed. And then now you're, you guys got the studio and you're doing music now. Yeah. 
which is like a hot thing during high school too. Yo, what up? It's Blackleaf. I'm here at Grow Generation. And guess what? Drip Hydro storming the market. All the best growers I know are switching to it. And guess what? There's a reason because it's preserving terps. I keep hearing that preserving terps. And that's why we're here with Sunshine, facility advisor, facility manager, overall the man with Drip Hydro. Listen to why it's different, man. What's going on guys? Sunny here with Drip Hydro. Thing is, at the end of the day, we just wanted to make a simple, clean, cost-effective nutrient line that nobody has really seen on the market right now. Nobody uses really our chelation formulas, uh, the micronutrients that we have pulled to make this line is really just what makes it overall bringing that consistency and quality back to what we want to see in growing herb again and overall at the end of the day it's still really light on your wallet it's a five-part nutrient line and again if you're not staying sterile or you have a big facility and you don't want to run rock wool and you want to run a mix of cocoa with an enzyme or something you don't even have to run flow with it so at the end of the day it's just saving you money on your wallet while bringing the consistency and the quality of terps back we wanted to bring the terps back and bring the soul back to growing versatility cost effective and quality i mean what else can you ask for drip hydro first smoke of the day black leaf approved peace yeah a studio i mean holy shit yeah 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 just them backing his passions yeah them saying like oh music okay yeah here let's do some beats yeah. nah, and then be like every yeah. little step even his mom not being like tripping about the weed shit to where you know what i'm yeah. saying like it's it, it seemed like it was, it was just part of it you know <laughs> it was feather it was feather. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah they're all that. gonna see this and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah is no, this the first they're gonna know about it what really no, happened no yeah. uh no no they you know. told she it. figured it out yeah. like yeah, yeah that coconut horchata though bro smoking got you yeah, laid back so, huh? laid back and i'm like about to reach for a second bag no Man, you know what bro that's a lot of people's like go to genetic Dude, of ours you know what i mean smoking because bro. it tastes insane it tests like over 40 percent you know it's not lemon cherry you know it's, it's not, definitely potent it's not it laid it's me not back. a lemon cherry it's still can't like the candy lovers still love it you know and that's why i gotta shout out my partner frank he does a hella job with like the branding and marketing of shit man you know what i mean he's a he's a workaholic and a hell of a businessman and like he could take Smoke something great. market it and make it go but like the coconut, like usually things nowadays, like everybody's like, oh, you need new bags. You need new this every week. Like people are getting tired of the same. This shit has lasted the test of time. You know what I mean? And like it ain't going nowhere. Like, you know, people fuck with it. It, it reminds me a little we of got new more. bags for it to kind of like try to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give it new life. All, all brands update the packaging over yeah. time. If you notice, yep. even in the grocery store, like anywhere, there's always going to be changes. Um that's if you're not you have to grow like that's just people people try to like they want to call that selling out or this or that or oh it's not the same but it's like no nah, it's everything has to evolve in life it does man um this smells great though you know it's funny because like i always say how parallel the weed and the music business is and and what i mean by that is like you know this is the album, right? This is the album cover. The weeds, the music, and the brand is the artist. You know what I mean? It's it's very parallel, man. And and uh um yeah, I don't know. I just always make that uh that analogy with people. I'm just like in and, and uh also how quick people are digesting the you know, how quick they lose uh interest in something you know what i'm saying with music like we can go on like back in the days bro you had to go to the store mm -hmm. buy the thing mm -hmm. buy the tape buy the cd go home open it up right now it's like you go to your phone and everything's so accessible that it takes a little bit of the sentimental value out of shit you Definitely know what i mean does. and we can go online right now and see a song with michael jackson jay-z and tupac and you might not even listen to it right away you know I'm gonna check that out tomorrow. When back in the days, you'd be like, "What the fuck?" You know, and there would have been a line around the store waiting for the release the night what? before. People sleeping out, camping out. Exactly. Yeah. So even with the weed thing now, it's like I'm selling weed, and my boys like they want new bags. They they don't want that anymore. They want new bags, and I'm like, "Yo, what the fuck do they do with these bags, man?" Like I smoke weed. I can't smoke the bag, man. <laughs> you know. 
But I get it. You know, it's like you got to play the game, bro. You can't be that bitter guy on the sideline trying to pick out the loopholes and everything. Play the game, bro. Or get left or die. behind. Evolve or die. And that's the tough doesn't matter. part. It doesn't discriminate. You, you know? literally have to. And it some people will want to be, you know, that's well, every no. industry. Yeah. And if you're playing the game of business, which is a sport that, like, I, I think that every, like, grown adult should play or mm -hmm. is playing, uh, you have to evolve. Evolve or die. That's, that's, yeah. that's it. And it's got to get out you. your own way sometimes, it's you know, not up because to you. this is the thing with the brand, right? Is like, I'm a fucking weed snob. I'm a picky smoker, bro. Like, I'm not going to just try anything. I guess it's kind of like the same with food. Like, I'm not going to just go somewhere and try a bunch of random shit. I like what I like, you know? And when it comes to weed, I smoke for flavor more than anything, you know? Like, I don't need to be annihilated, like, during the day when I'm trying to run around and bust moves. I just want something that tastes good, you know? That's why, you know, I love the the Z Terps. I love the gelatos. I love the, you know, even the lemon cherries. Like you get a good batch. This fucking shit tastes phenomenal, you know? Um, but um This has a vibe of the original gelato 41. It had like a 41. It's actually a 33 cross. So it's got the 33 in there. Yeah. I I I smell it in it. And it, it has the potency of those when they hit, when they're like, good, this is a great batch, bro. Yeah. It tastes phenomenal. No, I mean, I would go guys, out and try this. The coconut I'm, horchata. Where is this? Where can you get this? Uh, you should be able to get it at most, most cookies, everything. Yeah. Southern Cali, uh, Bay Area. All over. Know, yeah, out, yeah, all over. Dub's man. Garden is what Dude. we're talking about. Coconut horchata. Yeah, Dub's. So, Fire. you know, that's, so, so I was kind of saying that to make this point is like, you know, in a perfect world, like when you're building your brand, right, you, you, you want to have something that you stand behind that you're like, yo, I smoke this. But it's tough because at what point do you get out of your own way and say, hey, you know, this is something somebody else is going to love, but maybe not for me. Like if I work at a deli and I love fucking turkey sandwiches, <laughs> you ain't gonna am I going to only sell <laughs> turkey sandwiches? No. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, you're going to eat a turkey today, right? Yeah, so... <laughs> What's on the menu? You know, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, so I'm trying to evolve in a business sense where people see brands and they're like, oh, they stirred away from what they were. It's like, no, bro. The shit that I love, somebody else might not love, you know? And I got to get out my own way and say, hey, let's market this and brand this, even though I'm not going to be smoking it every day. It's, but it's still somebody else is going to love it, you know? Totally agree. Right. I, some dispensaries, like, I mean, it's almost a reflection if you go to the local supermarket at this point. That's like, it, it's just an eclectic community. Like when you go into dispensary. So, yeah, you have to open it up and you got to be able to offer multiple things. Cause, like, what you probably smoke, even when you say, like, I don't want, is probably the top 10% of what's out there, which isn't accessible to most people. Yeah. That too. At all. Yeah. I'm bad, man. Like, I'm bad, bro. Like, if I buy weed and it, it don't have a taste, like, I don't really care about the white ass shit as much as I care about the flavor, you know? Although it is nice when you see that white ash burning. Um, what do you guys feel about that whole white ash phenomenon thing? Because now it's become such a big thing, like, and now it's getting to the point where these buyers are so fucking picky, bro. They want to smoke it. They got to check all the boxes. It's got to do this. It's got to do that. It's got to cure this. It's got to cure that. It's like, yo, yo, my G is like, this is crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it is wild. Oh, fuck. You know, Bro, at what? this point, I'm I'm like delirious about it, like just laughing about it. Just like I laugh about it. It's, like, it's yeah. so far gone so quick, bro, that it's just like it's hard to have pride in doing what you do anymore. And that's like something that hasn't been getting talked about. Maybe we'll talk about that on the next checking in. Maybe we'll go deep, but we that's get asked another, another thing. But this guy you know, started you feel this. me as like uh it, it's crazy. They wanted to do a magic trick, like shine, glitter, gold, like it's it's just insane, and yeah. The, at the end of the day, they don't even know what they want. No one does. There yeah, you go. it's there mass you go. market that's confusion. What it, they, they just, yeah, that's what it really. And no one to. knows, like, because I, you could fact check as much as you want and be like, wait, what? And it never, I never show up, and I'm like, damn, it actually like is what I, you said it was, or you thought like it's like no, bro, like, look, this is like 
you know, you can call it out quick where it's like, um, people have different sets of standards. Mm -hmm. And so quality gets really lost in translation. Absolutely. Someone's talking about what they got. And this happens sometimes with even people who I expect to know not to say certain things. And then I show up, I'm still like, damn, bro. It's because it's business. You've been stuck in your own shell over here. You don't even know what's going on. You have no yeah. perspective. Yeah, have you been making rounds and seeing for yourself? Do you really know what's on the market? That's Do you like really know I... what things are going for? Not just even here, like just in the grand scope of things. Let's talk about the global markets. It's like, it's happening, you know? So It, it is, man. And, and it's and... bottoming quick. And a lot of people are in denial about it. But- I am. Here we are. Yeah, I still it, am. It I'm fucks like, me I'm, up like when I go to these beautiful farms and they're growing all this off-brand shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's fucked up because nobody wants that shit. It's got to, you got to have everything now. Like back in the day, you could grow any strain, but if you grew it well, it would sell for top dollar and people liked it. It could be a sativa. It could be a train jack, wreck, anything. Yeah. And then now it starts to become like, it's like it levels up. Now you want two things. I want it to be the strain I want to smoke and it needs to be fire. Okay, yeah. check, check. Right now it's, it needs to be the strain I want to smoke, fire, uh, grown well, and then it needs to burn white. Okay, check, check, check. Okay, now I also want the flavor to hit. roll up 10 different flavors. But but Damn. it has to hit it's every box through. now. And it does. Like, look where we go with strains. Like they want a $1,200 chair. pound that checks every box. I'm like, yo, it, it don't fucking work like that's that. That's the old though. grower tale. Like, I want the best thing you got and I want it for nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's, is white ash important? I think it is. It's definitely a, it's definitely a factor in what I would consider um, clean, flavorful smoke. Yeah. But it doesn't ruin it for me if it isn't. It, it but if, is. if but I have better, if it is, I have that's six check boxes, right? It's like, how does it look? How does it smell? How's the potency? And not in any order, right? It, like everyone's order is different. Mm -hmm. You want flavor. So that's the number one box. Yeah. He wants potency. That's his number one box. Someone but there are other boxes, right? Where it's like, okay, flavor, potency, look, smell. Some people want it sticky. Ash. Like if it's not sticky. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like. I feel like there's way less sticky weed. Yeah, there is. I mean, because there's so crazy? much lemon cherries. Because you definitely know coming from skunk. You couldn't even oh, have bro. a little half zip of that and not everyone be like, holy bro, shit. I'm telling you. Now you could have a whole room full of turkey bags and people would be like, oh, I didn't even smell it. Dude, I <laughs> used to be able to go on my mom's little manila yellow envelope, take the little popcorn ball of weed, open it up, pinch from the inside and put that shit back together and put it back. You know, it was like know. Velcro. It was <laughs> like a popcorn ball. Dude. Yeah. 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 It was that. It was that funky. You know, taste good. You remember pool. too. You like pulling out like a half pea, and it would slide out, and you'd have the. It literally sit in this the side. Like it looked like yeah. it's in a bag still. Yeah. And you're like, no, here's the bag. Sours like sour like that good sour used to do like a big oh. spongy football. Yeah, I think a lot of that has to do with genetics, but I do think a lot of that also has to do with inputs. When you yeah, put cheap practices. things in, I think everybody's a little lost in translation on that end too, because everyone talks about the, uh, you know, whatever they're running. But it's like, nah, dude, you're running your, this is custom. Like, this isn't standardized. You know, they have all these different little, well, we add a little bit of this and we do a little bit of that. And then we got a little bit of the, the. Everyone's doing different shit at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At some level, right? And it's, there's no one like doing, running all the same program and being like, unless it's in house and orchestrated, right? But other than that, like, as far as what one brand's doing to the next brand, they're doing things a little bit different. They're adding things, taking things away mm -hmm. in a different way. And that's definitely what I've noticed is that. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. No one's really doing like, no one's like back in the day, a lot of people were running the standard program mm -hmm. eh, baseline of G -H. there's less options. Let me well, just say well, there's well, less well, options. I mean, exactly. like, like regiments well, are just the whole, four, yeah. just the whole GH and just basic flood yeah, and exactly. drain shit and not a lot of not a lot of uh, extra stuff to add in and all this and that like you know what you know you would have uh, a few things right that like maybe bat guano or this or that like mm -hmm. you know what I mean like I just think that, that, we know, had whatever, better quality yeah, yeah, yeah. inputs and less options but at the end of the day other than that it wasn't like this 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 why well, put this that there's just so many fucking products on There's the market. so many ways to do it and they all work. 
When Think I about first start growing weed, supposedly, yeah. yes. When I first start growing, everybody told me, yo, don't ask everybody you know for advice. Oh Find one guy that's fucking masterful at what he does and listen to him. That's with you know? anything. Like, if you want to get into music, yeah. find the guy you Even look up to, business, get up underneath yeah. them and learn. Yeah, exactly. That's because if not, I, you, totally you, you, you know what it is, man? Life, life and, and music and creativity, it's about borrowing, bro. Like, my music shit, I'm borrowing from all the people I'm a fan of. You know what I mean? And I do that in life. Like, I tell people, like, if I see somebody who's better at an aspect of life than me, whether it's better father spending more time with your kid or you're taking your wife here or there and i and i feel like i'm lacking in that area like i'll <laughs> borrow from you and be like you know what i need to do more of what he's doing you know what i mean because then next thing you know i'm going to be this human compiled of all these beautiful inspirations you know I'm from different people that are doing beautiful shit you know what i'm saying and um yeah that's how that's how i look at it man because um, I look around and I see some of my friends that, you know, are better in certain aspects of life than I am, you know, like they're spending more time with their kid, they're doing this or, or, or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? And if I, you know, humble enough to know like where I'm lacking and it's like I always told people like in order to get to where you want to be in life, you got to know where you stand and you got to know like what's your strong points, your ego can't outweigh your reality. You know what I mean? You can't be so fucking hung up on yourself that you don't see your own flaws, right? Because we're all trying to just be the best versions of ourselves. You know what I mean? But um, hopefully, yeah, yeah. a lot of people, you got to put in effort. You got to yeah. put in that work. Yeah, I mean, we're all works in progress. But mm -hmm. when you say it's like uh, the most important thing in life is who you're around. Who you're spending time around. Yeah. Because yeah. like you just said, you you borrow and you're influenced. Yeah, absolutely. It's osmosis, bro. right? Like you start and they probably pick up on some of your traits and stuff too. And that's just I'm this sure. is common, you know, common law for human people to do that with I mean, around yeah, each other. You're only as good as the company you keep, you know what I mean? And and my thing is is uh time not everyone lasts the test of time, friends, family, girlfriends, whatever it is, you know, not everybody's meant to be in your life forever. You know, some people come and go. Uh, some people wear out their welcome. Some people burn. Some people you just outgrow. You know what I'm saying? And uh, for me, man, um, I super value like my friendships and my relationships. And like I tell people like my mission in life is different. Because I'm not here to make the most money, you know? Um, more, more so for me, it's about leaving my legacy intact, you know? And that goes to, you know, my album. I don't know if you guys saw that I'm promoting my album, um, If Tomorrow Never Comes. And that's why the title of that is what it is. Because it's like, if tomorrow never comes, what did, what, what did I do to make my... And, you know, leave my mark on this. What, what did I do to leave my mark, bro? Past just and money. To me, I always tell, you know, say this is the most important thing for me is what people are going to tell my kids when I'm gone. You know, what kind of human was cause? You might be in a fucking ice cream parlor and some guy bumps into my son and say, hey, I knew your dad. He was this kind of guy, you know, and that's my motivation in life to leave that kind of print, you know, and, and to just, uh, you know, man, my, my, my name, like, bro, it means so much to me. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I protect that. Like I, I can't vouch for, you know, I can't vouch for everybody, but like the people that I can vouch for, you know, the small little circle that I do got, like I super value and appreciate it. Um, because I do got some great friends and people around me and my wife and parents and shit, you know, and I can't, I didn't just wake up a good guy. Like I said, I was a hell of a fucking piece of shit kid, you know, and fi luckily I figured it out as my adulthood. I got it all out of my system young. So, um, my adulthood, I didn't have as many hiccups, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. More focused. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, I've, I mean, yeah. I've took some L's, and you know, 
lost a lot of money and lost some good friends, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they weren't so good if I lost them, but <laughs> you know, um, I've been through my share of shit, you know what I'm saying? But uh, ultimately, man, we got some beautiful people around us, man. I'm super fortunate for that, you know? Uh, a lot of support. I feel like I got a lot more love than uh, hate, you know what I'm saying? I'm not one of these guys that got all these imaginary haters and shit, you know? It's like, nah, I don't have any enemies, bro. You know, I got to be out and about. I ain't burning no bridges. I'm not owing no tabs. I'm I'm everywhere and for years, you know what I mean? So uh, I, I super take pride in my credibility, man. You know what I mean? Because I feel like that's where my value is, is being trusted. Like I tell people, once someone could trust you, opportunities for you are endless, man. You know what I'm saying? Now you can pick up my kid. Now you can go bust a play for me. Now I need you to go grab this money. You need to do this. Whatever it is, like someone, you know, being able to, you know, be trusted and like people knowing you don't have ulterior motives so you're not pocket watching this guy or eager to take somebody's spot and you know, just uh, my value is in my energy, bro, more than financial gain or brand even. You know, it's like I used to ask my girl, I'd be like, babe, why do all these fucking people gravitate to her? I don't know what the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I still, you know, and, and uh, still am, uh, catches me by surprise sometimes, like, you know, s certain legendary artists, you know, might do a song for me just, you know, like Jada Kiss. First day I met him, end up going to the studio that night and doing a record together, you know, and it, it was super genuine. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck did I do to deserve this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, I said, I told him at the end, I said, I don't know why, I must be doing something right. You know what I mean? But um Energy, man, is 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 contagious. You know what I'm saying, and and I always tell people like your relationships will get you through the door, but your energy is going to keep you there. You know what I'm saying? Because so when you get a call though, like yo, uh, Jada Kiss coming to town, he wants to book some studio time with you, or how, how are, do you are you immediately going through all your beats and trying to figure out like what do I got that Jada Kiss is going to like, or or do you start making? It's like what's the process there? Because that's like that's huge. So so the thing with Jada was was trippy because he was actually coming to the Bay on some weed related shit. He was trying to build a brand at a time, and like my boy uh, my boy G um, uh, hit me up and was was bringing him out. So. I ended up taking them on tour, like a bunch of facilities. I brought them to Preferred, you know, of course, you know, Dave's the goat, you know what I'm saying? Dave is Fucking the goat. most greatest human yeah. ever, right? Um, <laughs> it's a big brother. Love that guy, yeah. man. I swear he's great. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's one of the few good men we got left. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> shout out to Dave, big dog. I know. Big shout out Better to check Dave in. Yeah, Preferred dog. Gardens. Yeah. Impressive. Fuck, yeah, he's killing it too, man. I'm super proud of that guy. But um, yeah, I took him there. I took him to Seven Leaves. I took him, you know, just took him on a tour looking at Flower. Just, you know, they're trying to just figure it out. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, man, I played him some music. So my boy G was like, I was like, should I drive down or get a ride? He's like, get dropped off so you could ride back with us. Because that's like two hours you could be in the car building and shit, you know, and vibing with him. That's a homie. And, and I'm like, all right. You know, like, honestly, guys, like, I'm super, like, not aggressive with my music or, like, yeah. with rappers. I don't yeah. want to be that corny. Dude, listen to my shit, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's just, tough. It ain't, it's a fine yeah. line. There's a thin, like, when you're a rapper, dude, there's such a thin line between being a cornball and a fucking rapper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like, you got to tread lightly. And um, honestly, man, the first fucking song I played just stopped it. And looked at me, he's like, that's you? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, keep going, you know, playing shit. And, you know, he was impressed. I mean, I grew up fucking mimicking the guy my whole life, trying to rap like him and, you know, whoever else. So um, to me, bro, that's the ultimate reward. It's like when one of your peers fuck with you, you know? I had that, like, with a couple people, you know, Scarface, couple big guys, you know, that have, you know, 
gave me my my little credit behind the scenes and like that shit I take that shit means more than any money you know my my purpose with the album is like especially you know my age and where I'm at as an artist I'm not looking for like a deal or some crazy bag like I just want to put some dope shit in the universe and like I spent a lot of money on this project I probably won't get back you know if I do it'll be over a long period of time but for me it's about that shit's going to be up forever so if I don't have an album like this for a while, or even if it, it's like this, bro, you got a kid, you want to find the best daycare, you right? You want to, you're going to drop your kid off with the best home possible. So it's like when you create that album, it's like your baby, you want to find the best home for it. You want to make sure it lives, you know, it, it gets heard, basically gets heard and seen in the right light. You know what I mean? I don't care if it's a hundred people, a thousand people. But I just want to be able to like stand by it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, what went you, into producing this? What went into yeah, like talk about the album yeah. a little more? Like, what what can they expect? Obviously, um, it's a passion project. Like, excuse me, guys, you can see um, that clear. Yeah, man, it's it's a collective of music, like from like you know five six years of like shit that. Some of it's, you know, done more recent, but some other stuff, you know, is, is older stuff that like lasted the test of time. Because with music, the quality, like music stays the same, but the quality changes, you know, and the drums change and certain things that affect the quality of the production or the sonicness, you know, that changes. So I might have had a great song, but over time it sounded dated because the drums now the people are doing a different style of drums or whatever, the, you know. So basically, you know, uh, some of it are like songs that like survive the test of time. Um, some of the other shit is newer shit. Um, yeah. So I don't, my process is different, man. Like I ain't put an album out in hella long and I never want to do like what I did with this shit ever again. I never want to create like a masterpiece again. I just want to put out shit and get it out. And like um, my my partner told me this, there's this word, uh, a term called like progress paralysis, where it's like you're getting in your own way too much. You're overthinking shit, you know, even with the branding shit, you're like, oh, I don't want to put anything in here, but the shit that I like. And it's like, you do that. You're going to have two skews, skews or whatever, you know? Yeah. You're not going to, you're not going to have a fat menu full of shit because, you know, you're getting in your own way. But, um, um, so yeah, man, like I, I, I'm a super overthinker, you know, but I felt like now was a good time. Uh, you know, everything's aligning, you know, I'm coming out my shell a little bit more, um, you know, burn, you know, you know, big shout to burn because uh, he's kept me relevant all these years. You know what I'm saying? And he might, you know, credit me for helping him stay, you know, uh, relevant with the music or whatever. But like he really shared his platform with me, you know, which is a hell of a platform. You know, what I mean, from the weed and the music shit and just from him, like, I mean, he's one of the only people to really fuck with me like that. You know what I'm saying? So um being featured on all these albums him letting me drop verses show my shit off and you know even though I'm 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 a little older and a little later on it's like hey man that shit still is touching people and honestly man I'm not even mad about like dropping it this late because I'm so content with the content of the music and like who I am now it's like shit I could live by and be proud of and like I'm not coming in the game on no cornball shit or, you know, flexing with guns or doing a bunch of shit that I'm not really into. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's important, man. You know, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm big on perception. You know what I'm saying? I don't ever want to be looked at as like that guy, you know? So. What's oh. a, when you and Burn are going to put together an album, right? Or does he call you and do you start to play beats and that works its way into this is what the vibe of the album will be or does he already have like hey i want to i'm going in like i want beats kind of like this sometimes it's different every every project he kind of approaches different like we did that Gotti album that was really big where he kind of let that was the first time he really let me take the wheel and you know gave me a budget to play with to bring in other producers to do shit 
Because Burn, Burn is, is uh, he really likes to do things his way. You know what I'm saying? And rightfully so, because he's figured out a formula to this shit. And he's got 40 some albums and he's, you know, on tour right now, getting nice bag per show, 40 cities with Snoop and shit. So whatever he's done, he's figured it out. So right now, even with my project, he's behind the scenes helping me roll my shit out. Hey, post this, do this. I'll post it, you know, because I'm fucking lost. I'm like, what do I do? Where do I go? He's like, don't trip. I got you, you know, yeah, that's dope. which is which is man it's priceless. You know what I'm saying? Um, we hear that a lot behind the scenes about him. Yeah, he we gets do. discredited a lot, but from the people that are actually fucking with him, it's been all solid. They're like, like man, man, he stands up every time for me. Like you hear about Burn behind is a the class scenes. act, bro. Burn has done some beautiful things for people behind the scenes that he don't advertise, talk about. You know what I mean? Me, myself included, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I'm, I'm. I super value our our friendship and bond. I mean, it's family, bro. Like it, the the music and the weed shit is what it is. But like, that's my boy. That's good company. Like, you know, we, you know, when you get to this age, bro, good company is priceless. You know what I'm saying? Someone you can just hang out with and don't gotta worry about and don't gotta fucking watch or don't think he's plotting or you know. I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? And um, uh, so anyways, with that being said, certain, every, every album is different. Sometimes he'll hit me and be like, I'm working on shit. And then there's like three or four of us all sending him beats. And it's not like a favoritism thing. He's just going to fuck with it. He's got to actually like this shit. You know what I'm saying? But the Gotti album was a cool process, man. And I feel like that's one of the more... Uh, it's one of the bigger projects, I say. You know, he's got so many albums. Everybody's gonna have a favorite. But uh, the branding behind that was cool, like insane. Yeah, yeah. You guys did your thing. Insane, bro. I mean, at the end of the day, man, the guy is a fucking maniac. He is a workaholic to the fiftieth power, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like you're talking about somebody that's already cool financially that still works. Like he don't got shit. He's just infatuated with the business man that shit is like i said people i borrow from i look at burn i'm like i'm not doing enough how can you expect the same results as somebody who's outworking you you know what i'm saying you can't it's like fuck dude let me let, let, like you know let me go get on my shit some more so yeah that you know and with that being said that's why i'm like yo this album i put so much into it so much time that it's like I'm at a point where it's like you just want to get it out and, and get past it. But at the same time, I got some really dope features, you know what I mean? And that doesn't happen like today uh, a lot, you know, without having to pay people stupid money and shit, you know. What's one of your one or two favorites that came together? Uh, well, obviously the Jada record, you know. Yeah. Fucking pretty cool. Life goals, you know what I'm saying? Um uh Conway, I got Conway on there. He's like one of my favorite rappers right now. The dude is special, man. You know, he's fucking special. And um I got a song with him and Styles P. It's pretty dope. I got one with uh Burn and and uh Wiz, which is That's dope. I mean That's huge. Yep. Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, you know, I'm I'm super proud of it, man. And uh uh I just wanna I just want to give it a rollout. You know, I got a few videos coming. I got some cool artwork done. Like, I spent some good money on the album, you know, just to make sure the presentation is nice. You know what I'm saying? You got one or two artists that are like, this would be a goal for me to work with someone like X, Y, or Z. <clears throat> Man, yeah. Even outside of hip hop, but just any, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, well, shit. I like a lot of 70s, like, old soul shit, you know what I'm saying? But some of those guys are dead already, like Bobby Womack and shit, like, some of my favorite guys, you know? But some of those songs, like, from that era, that music is so sincere, bro. You don't hear that shit in today's music. You got to go to the 70s when those guys were really being honest and spilling their guts on these fucking records. That shit strikes a different nerve, you know what I mean? But I would say... uh I mean, man, 
I still got the bucket list like, you know, the Jay-Z's and the Kanye. Nas, I'd say. If I had one person right now, not for financial gain, just for like personal, Nas. I mean, he's always been my favorite, you know. I would love to like lock in with him, you know. That's Hill. That's I'm Kaz, cool. he's Nas, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. So, I think we'd hit it off. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, man, for sure. That's like, I mean, we, we did one with him on the Gotti album, you know what I mean? He was on that shit. I mean, fuck, that was super bucket list, but like to get in the studio with him and vibe mm-hmm. out and be able to trade some stories and you know, get some game and shit. That would be cool, man. When you find out that you are nominated for a Grammy, what's that like and where are you at? Mm. Man, that was probably about five, six years ago. You know what's crazy? Is I was on a fucking reggae song, man. Jay Book. And my dad, my buddy, uh, my buddy Max, uh, Max Perry, he brought me in on that. Me and my pops, you know what I'm saying? And we both got nominated, so my dad got cool. nominated at the same time. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Yeah, you and your father both got nominated for the same song that you worked. Yeah, on. Jay Bug featuring Snoop Dogg. Yeah, wow, it's crazy. That's like a life goal to be able to do that for. I mean, for your oh, father man. too. Like, yeah, man, I really one of my life goals. Like, I want to do a whole fucking project with my dad, you know, and just like document it and. My dad's a soulful fucking guy, man. Like he's 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 a serious individual musically, you know. Um, but that's just one of those things, you know, that would be cool. But it's just, you know, got to make it happen. How'd that project come together? Uh, the one that you're nom- that you were nominated for. Oh, so yeah, that was just a song. I just you you know, uh, uh, like I said, my buddy Max was working close with uh, Wash House and Jay Boog. And um, they just sent us something to work on and fucking ran, you know. With the Grammy shit, you never know, man, because there's these people, there's a board, you know, the people that sit on the board or the Grammys that vote and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So you really, you really never know, man. You know? That's an epic, like, checkbox in life. That's why they're always bringing that shit up. Yeah, but I yeah, need the yeah, Grammy, yeah. though. I need to fuck the nomination. I need the Yeah, Grammy. yeah, yeah. No, nah, I'm I'm super uh, grateful for every little accolade and achievement that I've that I've got because, you know, um, me and Byrne had a record go platinum too, like a a, a Latin record that, that coming from where we started from and shit. That's that's life goals for sure. Absolutely. Which record was it? El Chivo. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I can see the artwork already in my head. You guys did a great branding with that. When things take off, I mean, his branding is always on point. His art direction yeah. is fire, man. He he don't cut no corners, you know? Nah. How'd you, how'd you link up with Champelli originally? Oh, man. Pelly, that's my dog. So, I mean, Pelly was this fucking myth when I was a kid. He was the myth and the legend, you know? But, like, he was the guy. I show up to my boy Genesis' house, and he... Pelly just left and there'd be like trails of this Pelly weed and we'd get to hit like a little bit of it and but we'd never get to meet him. You know, oh Pelly just left. Pelly just left. You know, it's like fuck, man, when we get to meet this guy, you know, but he'd leave, he uh he'd leave Jen some weed, and so we get to smoke the Pelly and shit back then, which was a it it was it, it lives up to the hype, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't I can't say that I had like ounces of it, because like I said, it was like this treat. I'd show up to my, my boy's house and there'd just be like a little bit next to the drum machine or something. Him and Pelly were making beats or and he'd be like, Oh, Pelly left me some Pelly, you know? Mm-hmm. Um But honestly, man, I didn't meet Pelly until he came back from Amsterdam. Or wherever he was, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 Fucking Malaysia. Or yeah. I don't know where he was. But uh, He just did a bid. He told us he rolled was in Air. Bulgaria. Yeah. He, laying low. Talk about mate, like inspiring Bro to see him over. just be like, all right, seven, eight years. Like most people would, wouldn't be able to do that. Well, right? I knew that it's story because believe crazy. it or not, like I was around some of those same guys at that time just on the musical scene. I was in the studio with some of those dudes and it was an edgy scene at that time, bro. You know what I'm saying? You'd be in the studio. I, 
I bullshit you not. I put this on my kids. I'm in the studio with a kid that just got shot in the head. He got a head wrap on and they're passing him the fucking blunt. And I'm like, yo, this kid just got shot like yesterday. Like he's fresh out of the hospital. The head wrap in the wheelchair, hitting the weed. I'm like, oh, you know. About to it, drop a disc. It was a different time, you know, in the Sick. Bay Area at that time with the scenes and the shit that was going around at that time. Um, it was a different energy, man. And um, uh uh yeah you know that that shit was was a wild time but um yeah man um to see you know to see him in full mode now in star mode you know what i'm saying you gotta love it man he he uh deserves his just due for sure you know what i'm saying he's getting it you know i love it that's that's like one of my best friends you know he's a great he's dude a great energy. beautiful human man you yeah. do you, you uh you fuck with turtle Turtle pie? Yeah. Uh, no turtle? I, I just bumped into him. We were eating that crew over in Sacramento. He just blessed me with a few bags, dude. Great yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. I Another fuck with Area, dude. Yeah. Gives me the same vibe. Yeah, turtle, man. You know? I fuck with everybody, bro. I don't yeah. have bad shit to say about nobody. You know what I'm you saying? You know, when you see somebody and they're just like happy He's and excited. He's a cool dude. He, that's he, he of, walked that's, up that's how I feel like. Throwing the bags of weed yeah. at us and shit. He's, he's <laughs> yeah. just cool shit. And Pelly, same thing. Smooth dude, you see him, you just you could be in a you could be pissed off. You see him, you're like, oh, what's, uh, what's good? Pelly yeah. is as cool as it's gonna get. I'm waiting for we the had, Pelly we movie. Had a spot out in L.A. together, me and him. We 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 were working on music. We had a studio, and I've lived with Pelly, and you know what I'm saying, and shit. That's that's, that's my bro, man. That's fine. Some people were like, yo, you guys need a fucking uh uh, uh show together or something because they're catching yeah. wind of the little. Things we were doing in New York, and people got a kick out of that shit, the little humor, you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know. Start a little pod. Yeah. yeah. yeah fucking, Do some content. You know, fucking uh, Siskel and Ebert. You know, fucking, I want to see, like, the paid in full version of that story, yeah. weaving through the bay. Oh, the Pelly. Everyone touching Pelly each other. You know, just, yeah, and just the amount of people that cross paths. Like where you like we run into so many. He's such a legend. And then it, he connects a lot of people that then are connected now, like with you and Burn. And then he knew both. You know, it's just it's interesting. Oh, to what's hear. funny is me and Burn, when I first actually met Pelly was with Burn. We pulled up. He was Pelly came back and he was a chef. He was cooking at a restaurant down on Valencia. And we pulled up. And that's what I really. But it was weird because it was like I'd known the dude my whole life. Like instantaneously, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, solid guy. He still carries that passion for like high end cooking. Oh, Every day. he like yeah. does it he himself. I've seen him up at Chronic Culture going ham. Yeah. He gets yeah. busy, yeah, bro, yeah. big time. Dude, I'm I'm loving the uh, coconut, coconut horchata, horchata is fire. Is fire. I'm right two on, joints man. in, I and I, I'm like anything I would keep smoking like this. Where I'm Tastes like, great. We're fire. all gonna fight over the bags now. For man, sure, we'll get you guys some more, man. We I'm came kind of <laughs> unprepared and. Last minute. It's so funny because when she was trying to schedule, I'm like, oh, I thought I thought uh, this was July. And she's like, it is July. And I'm like, so lost. I didn't even know what fucking month, it, month we were in. I'm like, babe, what, or is this June or fucking July? Like, I thought, honestly, when she scheduled, it was like Thursday. I thought it was going to be like next month or something. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to be down here in L.A. this week. So it was like. Damn, worked no, out perfect. It, it, That's it why all, we're on it, it like all that. Worked out. Yeah, you know, I was like, "What are you working on right now? What do you? What's the next oh, thing?" So, uh, after this album, my son, man, he's actually featured on my album. My my twenty two year old, the Dom. He goes by Dom Polo. He's fire. That's dope. He's dope, and he's not dope because he's my son. He's dope because he's dope. Like, I'm a real like. I'm not gonna just put you on my album because you're my homie. You know, you yeah, got to yeah. compliment my shit. And, you know, a few years back, man, he started like fucking around and I heard it and I instantly heard the potential off his first song. I was like, oh, this kid keep going. He'd be a fucking problem, you know. And um, I had a song that needed a hook and he's like, dad, I need some weed. I'm like, all right, put a hook on that song for me then. You know, when I get home. <laughs> I press play and I'm like, oh, this, he, he killed it. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool because I'm not like favoring him, you know, just putting him on there and he's whack. He's like, he's dope, man. And uh, he don't, he's not like super, super aggressive with it. Like as far as like, 
it's all he does, but like, I mean, there's no denying he's got something. And it's like the newer sound, the melodic, you know, shit. And um, after I drop this album, I really want to like put a little more energy into him. I mean, he's he's going to school and shit like that. So it's not his main focus, but it could still be a, a, a aspect of his life that he takes serious. You know what I'm saying? How crazy is that, though, that possibly could be three generations of cause on the same song? Like if you and your dad do the production and then he jumps on and does something, oh, that's yeah. insane. That is. So believe it or not, man, me and my dad, we did a, a record for Nipsey Hussle, bro, back in the days. So that's another story. Like I was working with Nip uh, uh, really early on in his career, like in 08. Uh, my, 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 my bro, Johnny Shipes, you guys might be familiar with, uh, Smokers Club, uh, Cinematic Records and shit. He... Uh, he flew me out to New York. Well, I had already did did the record with Nip, but like, you know, he flew me out and we did some more stuff. I got to really, you know, lock in with him early on in his career and shit, man. We got to build like a super genuine friendship. And uh, he called on me, whether I made the project or not, he called on me for every album pretty much up until the last one. Uh, you know, he didn't reach out. And, that, and that's when I was like reaching out to him, like, Yo, I need to get some beats to you, you know, and I'm hitting four or five different numbers I got on him and shit trying to trying to track him down and I finally did and uh unfortunately like not too long after that he passed and shit man but uh yeah me and my pops did a record for Nip and it's it's uh a big one it was, it was one with him featuring the game is one of like his early records called They Roll and um that's pretty cool my dad's been included in a couple little legendary little things, you know? And aside from his own shit, like he was playing with Jefferson Starship and like Pee Wee Ellis, who was James Brown, like horn player, and he's Dr. John Allen Tucson. He's played with some with some with some legendary dudes, you know? Your son's gonna be able to talk about you that same way though. Yeah. How yeah. crazy is that? It's amazing. And my little son, I got a 10-year-old, and he's taking guitar lessons, and he's, like, got perfect pitch and singing and shit, too. He don't, you know, it's just a matter of time. But, you know, and the thing is, with my kids, I didn't force that shit, because like you were saying, my pops didn't force it to me. I remember, like, I used to go to piano lessons just to get the fucking M&Ms out the jar, because the teacher at the end would be like, here's some M&Ms. And I never really, like... Man, I, I got ADD super bad, so, like, I'll start something, but, like, I'll take, like, four lessons and then quit, and it's the same how, like, later on in life, even in my 30s, I'd go take lessons for a while, and then I'd give up because they're trying to teach me fucking jingle bells and shit. I'm like, man, I don't want to learn this shit, you know? So, thing is with me is, like, I'm not a classically trained pianist or anything like that, but... I can play better than like the average rap producer because most of these kids like I don't know if you guys know, but like nowadays kids, they're making beats without keyboards. They, they're doing it with the keyboard and the mouse, like the computer keyboard, not like a piano keyboard or a synthesizer. They're clicking and punching in. And so, I mean, a lot of these kids, they, they have the ear, but they don't really have the musical know-how. So I like playing keys and, and fucking around and Every now and then I get lucky. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. 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 Keep it classic. Yeah. That'll never yeah. go anywhere. Yeah. And that's another thing. It's like I got a certain one thing about me. I feel like over the years is like people know me for a certain sound. I'm not like I don't got millions of hits. You know what I mean? Or like I'm not like, you know, as big as, like, there's some of these kids, they come in the game a year or two and they just fucking pass you up. You know, they just go on a run. They get lucky. But, like, thing is with, with, with me, it's like uh, I'm not, like, on everything like that. But, like, people know me for a certain sound. You know, like, they could, they could hear something and be like, oh, that sound like some Kaz shit. You know, and the stuff I do with Burn kind of helped stamp that as well because we kind of created a vibe over time and and people know his sound and they know my so they, they, we got a f familiar vibe you know what i'm saying and um as a as a fucking producer like uh that's kind of the goal you know like all the big guys had their own sound the timberlands the pharrells the dre's 
Kanye's even, you know, I mean, Kanye was more like just hip hop. So his shit at first wasn't just his sound, but it was more familiar. You, you know, you had a lot of people doing that kind of shit, but um, he took it where he took it, obviously. But like for me, uh, it's kind of cool for people to know me for a certain vibe. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't stray away too often. Like, I'm not super experimental with my music. Like, you're not going to flip through my album and hear like, oh, fuck, this 130 BPM EDM dance record. Like, nah, I kind of just stick to what I know. And the content might get redundant, but it's just is what it is, you know? I like what Pac says. Quality is timeless. When something is is quality, it's usually yeah. timeless. Classic. Yeah. You go yeah. classic, it's timeless. Yeah, a lot of people um, use that term like with my shit, like, oh, it feels classic. But like, honestly, I, we just did a record for um, Conway on his last album, uh, um, Won't He Do It, it was called. Um, and fucking Jay-Z commented, you know, sent him a text and commented on the record that we did and was like, yo, that one caught me right away. And he posted the screenshot, so I was like, oh, fuck, that's pretty cool. Jay-Z liked our record, you know? Wow. Yeah, it's things like that, you know? It's yep. like cool little moments, you know what I'm saying? Um, it didn't really, you know, it's not a financial game, but it's just a confirmation, man. And like money comes and goes, you know? Nobody sees the money you make, you know what I'm saying? Like look at all our favorite guys. They all died broke, you know, from Bob Marley to Pac or whoever else it was, you know? Um, but the trail is far more important than the money, you know, and the trail of dope shit you leave behind, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I forget what the saying is in the sandlot when he gets in the dream, <laughs> but that's what it reminds me of. It does. It's like heroes are here, are gone today and here tomorrow, but legends never die. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's the that's the part of it. It really is. It's like heroes are here today and tomorrow, but like legends never die. It's like it's. You're and right. you know, bro, I never like even refer to myself as like a legend. I don't feel like that's something for you to say. You, you right? That's something for other people to decide. And there's different levels of legend, right? Obviously, you got Michael Jackson. You know, dudes, you know, Most Quincy Jones. Even, yeah. And then you got people that might be like, Kaj, you're a legend. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, all right. Well, I don't take that shit. You know, it yeah, doesn't, yeah. I don't get besides myself, man, because it's, it's so much work to do, man. And, and um, there's so much stuff that's still undone for me, like uncharted territory, things that I haven't, you know, piano wise, like it's just so much shit that I could still learn or like still accomplish or you you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I've left myself a ton of room to grow, man, because I really just scratched the surface, you know. And honestly, like when the weed shit start kicking, and you start making money from that. The music shit sometimes gets pushed to the left because the music isn't really the bread and butter. It's just a passion, you know. And um, there was times where like, man. Even when I was signed like the Taylor Gang during that time, I was running fucking grow houses and not really utilizing the full platform and, you know what I mean, just chasing the paper and like because there's that sense of urgency when you got a family and you got kids and they're playing sports and they want fucking cleats and they want this and they want that. Your instinct tells you where to go, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, my kids ain't eating off these, the music, right? I got to go over here and get it while they're getting this good. You know what I mean? And luckily, like, I'm super good with money management and shit like that, bro. I don't have reckless spending habits and shit like that. Every penny I get, I try to hold on or flip it or, you know. Um, That's the last thing I wanted to ask you about, too, is the basically, like, working for Taylor Gang or working uh -huh. with Taylor Gang. Uh huh. Yeah, how'd that come about? Burn. Or through Burn? Yeah. Yeah, so Byron was always pushing, you know, for me over there, like, because he was over there, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I was his go-to guy, and he was always telling yo, you guys need to sign Kaz, you guys need to sign Kaz. And then finally they did it, you know, and it was cool. It was a cool time in, in life and shit, but um, uh, yeah, man, shout to Taylor Gang, Wiz, Will, everybody over there, super great people, mm -hmm. you know? That's cool. Yep, they got the uh, Dr. Dabber collab, the XS. 
fire. It's sold out, but a limited edition. So yeah. it's cool to see that. It actually changes color. So when you grab it, it's all black. When you grab it, the heat from your hand turns it yellow. Damn. Yeah, we got some good. We got some dope gifts for you and stuff. Oh man, you guys are awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out Doctor Dabber. Shout Taylor out Doctor Dabber, Khalifa yeah. Kush, Boy Wiz, man. man we'll go it, out and get the album. Yeah, go get the album. Tomorrow is not promised. Yep. Oh, uh, if tomorrow never comes. If tomorrow, tomorrow never, never comes. That's the same theory. So <laughs> I you, you that know, one. it's all good. <laughs> Uh, August sixteenth. August sixteenth. I got it. You know, it drops and and um all platforms. Yeah, yeah, it'll be all platforms. And I got some videos coming before that. You know, what I mean, I've, I got one with my son that uh I'll be that'll be the first thing I drop. It's the one with me and my son. Yeah, damn, that's dope. What's that? Gonna, what's that record gonna be? Uh, it's called uh, Till It's Over. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty pretty fire, man. That's I love how he's passing it down like his dad did. You guys keep it in the family. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. It's unique. It is. Yeah, man. I mean, like I said, bro, I didn't push it on my kids because I know, you know, the, the human nature, like the mind, the more you tell someone to do something, the more they, they want to reject it or, they, you know, the more I'm like, yo, your mom's like, go clean your room. I'll do it later. You know, like you don't. So... I never was like forcing it on him, but I did have him take piano lessons and you try to, you try to, uh, uh, wake them up to what's there and, you know, give them little doses of it and it's on them to take it and run with it. And if it's, that's what they're meant to do, then so be it. But, you know, he was playing football and he's fucking like a super like, uh, academic, you know, uh, intellectual, you know, he's math. And the, he's smart as shit, you know. He's like the 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 math you do when you're in college, bro. It, it shit looks like when a computer crashes and there's numbers everywhere. It's like I saw, I look at some of the shit he's doing, statistics and shit. I'm like, whoa, man. I stopped at fucking long division. I was done. You know, I'm on that Chat GPT. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> see, I haven't even got into that yet. That's a whole nother world. Yo, huh? Pack's That's, big on that. They say, whoa. I mean, they yeah. said it, it's basically to look at it as like when the internet came out. Yeah, that's what it is. Like I AI. see that everything starts to change because you when the internet first came out, no one knew what the hell was going. Like everyone's like making trying to make website. Like no one even know what website to go to. You know what I mean? So and then how that evolution happened, and then this is this. So imagine it in twenty years. No, nah. there's no way you'll be able to exist without using. Well, you, it. No, that that, 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 that AI, we're already we're, using we're it. We don't even replaced. know. It's gonna be crazy. You can go on there Look right the now. The music that's and happening. Be like, yo, I want to beat like Kanye. Yeah, and they're gonna give you that like pretty soon, man. Do you see the thing they're figuring out right now? It's like headlines everywhere. Is like people are making Drake songs mm -hmm. over other people's beats. Yeah, and they're trying to like profit off of it. And it's like, well, hold on, hold on. And so the, now there's going to be this battle that you're going to see in the courts of like, and this is good though. They're figuring it out, right? This is the process of like intellectual property and growth. But it's like, yeah, who makes the money off of that? If you literally go into it saying Drake's voice over Kanye beat with Jay-Z features. Well, that shit's like public domain. It's like anyone can eat. It's free. It's, for, it's a free for all, man. You hear the shit with Frank Sinatra singing Little John and shit. It's like, <laughs> I did. What the fuck is Yo. going on? It was, he's yeah. like from the window to the wall. Yeah. And he's literally, bro, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could do anything. It, it never ends. And now we're just starting. So wait till people who know music better start to put things together and write music. Like really start to craft top hits light with it and not having to pay anybody they don't got to pay you for a feature so now i'm going to put my time into just crafting your voice with my lyrics or with like there's so it's going to be interesting to see where it goes it's, it's pretty wild dude it's pretty wild i mean at least there's enough where money did this shit in the music come business. from bro like yeah. who created microsoft this google all the that everybody that's leading the charge of all this you know microsoft's behind chat gpt and then google has oh. I, f I forget what their project is but yeah, you know, everyone's gonna be into it. It's the it's the only it's one of the only sectors of like extreme growth. Think about it. Everything else is very uh you know, I don't wanna say in trouble, but not doing the best, not performing the greatest. If you're gonna um try to 
do something big right now and you say AI, a lot of people are interested. Yeah. Whereas you say that about anything else and they're like, ah, uh, you know, tech. T- much harder mm-hmm. to sell. Yeah. Tech yeah. is always, but boring. man, with music, it's crazy. I think it's going to have a big impact on music. It's nuts. But so, it could work for you. If you learn it, you got to Depending learn it, upon, I'm saying like, let's say the courts rule with the artist. And if you, you know, there's, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes to where maybe you now as an artist are able to utilize it for yourself. Like I, who knows where it's going to spiral to, mm-hmm. you know, this is, this is all unfound territory. And there's enough money in the music business. They're going to fight it and figure it out. If there wasn't a lot of money in the music business, you're going to get rolled right over and they're going to do whatever they want. But people are like, oh, you're you're going to encroach on this. We got to figure this out. Like that's it will be interesting. Yeah, for sure. Shit, man. Any shout outs? Any? Oh, man. I mean, shout out you guys, man. Shout out Dubs Garden. Shout out Mm Lacaz. Shout out Pelly. Shout out Burn. You know, the home team, man. You know? Yes, sir. One thing I got to say is like, we have these we storytellers and we got people that have amazing journeys come on the podcast and there's a commonality between a lot of people's stories and it's true friends and homies behind the scenes, putting them on, recommending their boy like, yo, you got to talk to my boy, man. Or like, yo, my guy, I have a guy for that. And them just thinking about you and like you passing that on. It comes up a lot with OGs, and I just uh, shout out to the people who do that. Yeah, shout to uh, Josh and Drew and those guys for uh, referring me to you as well, man. You know, Drew is, you know, one of the fucking most fire growers in California. Or green dogs. Period. I mean, green mm-hmm. dogs, flowers, like next level, you know? Main stage sack, the whole crew. Yep. Yeah, Caleb, man. He's an awesome guy, dude. Love all those people, man. You know, the community's beautiful, man. If 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 you see it for what it is and not a, just a money grab or like a a clout chase or a way to discredit someone, hey man, there's some some good people out there, you know? Mm-hmm. And um There's yeah, a few man. good men left. There's a few good men left, man. I compare it to everything. <laughs> top ten percent of anything is the best. Yeah. So you you get around the right top 10% of people who are really, and I'm not saying like, oh, they're the best, but just people that are really put in the work, have the passion. And you hear that commonality of like love, no hate. It's the top 10%. It's the hardest to get to, but it's the best to be around. Whether it's flour you're smoking, whether it's people you're around. True professionals that you can respect. You know what I tell like some of my friends and even in like the music shit, it's, it's all about not, 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 not meaning like your parents, but like who raised you in the game? Like if you came up under people that were doing lame shit, you probably took that mm-hmm. and practiced those same lame ways. You know what I mean? But if you came up around good, solid people that had love and were generous and, you know, put you on the game. And then it's all about who raises you in this shit, who you come up around and, and, and who shows you how to operate, you know, because even in music people practice some some squirrely tactics. You know what I'm saying? I see it all the time. And when they see how I operate, I'm like a one percentile. You know what I mean? Like I've included people on records that didn't do anything just because I didn't want somebody left out. That shit is unheard of in the music game. It's like people are like, you did what? Like that? you're too nice, you know? But I'm also counting on the universe to keep having my back and keep bringing me blessings and keep putting, you know, good people around me and shit. So, hey, man, it ain't no sweat off my back, you know what I'm saying, to help somebody out. And you know what? You know what else, bro? It's fucked up, but it's true, is that people aren't genuinely happy for you when they're not involved. You know what I'm saying? So I look at it like the more people I can include in this shit, the more people I got to celebrate with. Because I've had those moments where I had a big thing happen and I have no one to call, bro. I have no one to call because they're going to feel left out or we're just at that stage where it's not as cool anymore or whatever the fuck it is. But for some reason, I mean, just even recently, I, I mean, I've had things happen and be like, Looking at my phone, like who can I, who can I fucking share this with? You know what I'm saying? I That's feel real you. though. I That's feel you. Real. Yep, for real. The more people you include, the more people you can celebrate Bro. with. I like that mindset. It, 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 it's yeah. it's it's true. But everybody got to show up to play. 
But you know what the fucked up thing is, is everybody wants to be the first to do something. So you don't got a lot of people with that mentality because everybody wants to one up the next guy and then skip the whole work part. Let me get up here and then I'm going to help you. But it's like, nah, we get (laughs) up here together. You know what I'm saying? You know, one day at a time, man. One step at a time. I mean, keep fighting the good fight. Yeah, fighting the good fight, man. All day. The hippies, the hippies had it figured out, man. They say lead with love. Lead with love. I like that. Yep. I'm just thankful I never did anything I couldn't come back from. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people do, man. Crash out, bro. Yeah, for real. All it takes is one little decision. I mean, I had a, a lot of my friends crashed out. You know, a lot of my best friends, you know, uh, all ended up going to prison 18, 19. Like, I'm not, not just went to tours, like, where they didn't come home. They didn't come home for a while, you know, and mm-hmm. shit like that. And um, uh, I, I was, you know, involved with shit with them that could have led me to that and i was a y- younger still so thank god it was like juvenile hall and not prison and i was like able to get a slap on the wrist and like learn before it got to that point but it's like man you never know what life's gonna throw at you man and um for me it's just you know now as i'm older like i said you know i did so much lame shit as a kid that as i get older i just try to rectify that with doing c- good shit you know what i'm saying and I told myself, I'm like, yo, when I get out of this situation, like people, all the people that I fucked over and was mean to and shit, they're going to see me in a different light one day, you know? Put it out there. That's Absolutely. It. Shit, man. We appreciate it. It's right been on. nice today. For real. Just right having on, a nice man. conversation. Cosmo, Dubs Garden, yep. La Caz, the yes, coconut sir. horchata Bruh. fire. Coconut is special, Shit's man. smoking. Dude, we got, we got some other things on the menu coming too, man. Um, we got uh, well, we got Ponzu, we got Ginzu, we got Bubblegum Horchata, we got uh, that's on the Dub side. So for a while, you know, we were co-branding everything, Lacaz and Dubs on all the bags, and then we we're like, you know what, let's set these things uh, aside so they can, you know, Lacaz could be its own entity mm-hmm. and Dubs could be its own entity. So right now, we're working on ramping up my menu as well. So, yeah, that baby Herman. <laughs> I love Let's that. Let's go. I'm going to show like you guys it. the packaging and the flowers fire too. But, yeah, I'll just do some funny shit, bro, because I'm, I'm, I'm a goofball at heart. People that really know me know, like, I, if I wasn't so antisocial, I could have been a comedian maybe or, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you still could. I like <laughs> fucking with people. <laughs> yeah. Hell, yeah. Well, shit, man, Cosmo, we appreciate you. Yeah, episode Likewise. 106, man, for real. Thanks so Salute, much. Thanks man. for sharing the platform, man. For pre- all you've done and all you continue to do for the mm-hmm. game, bro. We appreciate it. Hey, man, that means the world, man. I, I appreciate you guys, bro, for recognizing that and sharing the platform with me and, you know, not giving up on me and staying on me to get out here, man, because we got We've it. run into you, like, I think five times over the last two years, and every time I'm like, yo... When you're ready, bro, let's, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, this is cool, man, because um, now I can go, you know, keep spreading the gospel and go. go. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Luckily, I got my album coming, and so, it's, you know, it's perfect timing, man. 100%. Go get that, man. Support this man. Yes, sir. Hustle is true, and uh, we appreciate it. Yep. You already know. It's first smoke of the day. We're out. Peace. Yes, sir. Oh, shit. I lost the link. Oh, it's right here. If you like this episode, watch more. Click right here. Right here.